name of the Father and Son, the Holy Spirit, one God, Amen. As the church kid are waiting outside Jerusalem and waiting for the crucifixion, we ask ourselves a very important question. What is the requirement of the Savior? All what a Savior needs to do is be an incarnated God who comes and dies for us. That's all what we need. But you will see that our Lord Jesus Christ decided to do it completely in a different way. He didn't just come and allowed himself to die. He could have just simply came and lived a simple life and at the end of his life, someone cut off his head and died for us and we would still have glorified him for being an incarnated God who emptied himself and took our flesh. But God decided to be born in a manger and live a very modest life. And at his childhood, he was casted out from his own land. He lived almost his life unknown. 30 years of his life, no one knows anything about him. A lot of times you will see God lonely without anyone next to him. You will also see him crying. And in the Bible, our Lord Jesus Christ cried three times. In the story of Lazarus, when he looked at Jerusalem and in Gethsemane. And all this pain and suffering was crowned at the cross. People who left him, people who rejected him, people who, yeah, and he, he healed their relatives and they come and cry out, crucify him. And you ask yourself, why? Why did you have to go through all this? You could have just came and died for us and call it a day. But you see, it wasn't good enough for God when we talk to him and pray to him and we tell him, God, we're going through problems or issues. He can tell us, I know what you're going through. God can say, look, I created you. I have designed you. I know exactly what you're going through. But God didn't say that this was enough. He said, I will come. And I will live every single emotion a human being goes through. When you stand and pray and you tell God, I am poor. He tells you, I know. Because I was poor. You tell God, I am lonely. He tells you, I know. Because I was lonely. You tell God, I, am being, I have been treated injustice, injusticely. People have been talking bad about me. He tells you, I know exactly how you feel. Not because I am God and I created you, but because I came and I felt exactly what you're going through. I demonstrated this to you. Everything we go through in our life, even death, God himself went through it. So there is no longer a relationship between us and God that doesn't reveal the hearts and the intention of God, but it's a, a life that we can relate to. Everything he did was completely relating to us. You see, when God came to save humanity, he did not do the bare minimum. He exceeded all expectations. When God came to save humanity, he did not do the bare minimum. He exceeded all expectations. And he had to even, I was even telling the youth the, the other day, when God came to wash the feet, for example. Yani the fact that he washed the feet is such a, yani a miraculous event. Yani God himself is washing the feet of, of the people he created. But God doesn't only wash the feet. 
He sees how the slave in the Old Testament used to wash, used to wash the feet. The slave would take off his robe, put a towel around his waist, and get on his knees and start washing the feet. Even when washing the feet, he exceeded all expectations. And I really don't think God could have sat in heaven and said, you know what, let me could have make the human being feel bad about their sins, and I'm going to show them so much love. No. It comes out from him. Yani without, I don't want to say without design or without thought, but it's his nature. God is love. Everything he does is full of love. We come today, kid, at the beginning of the Holy Week, sitting outside Jerusalem and standing in front of this magnificent love and don't know what to say. Stand speech, speechless. But the church today, kid, through the hours of today's readings, teach us, teaches us two things to meditate on. Two key questions to think, about, to think about. The first one is in the first hour. God tells you, unless the wheat grain doesn't die, if you take a wheat grain and you don't kill it get it in the ground, you will not have fruit. You won't have a tree. When we stand in front of this magnificent love, we have to look at our love towards Him. How can we measure our love towards Him? You look at that weed grain. Weed grain that dies so a big tree could come instead of it. You gotta ask yourself, how much did I die from this world? Yani, we come to church, we talk about yani, a lot of things. Yani, attachment to the world, attachment to people, attachment to money, attachment to jobs, atta so many attachments. How much am I attached to this world? And it was, it was kind of interesting. I was listening to Sonia and Jail Murat Abu Nabshoi Kamil. And she said that Abu Nabshoi came to her one day and told her, Look, how about we leave our apartment and go live with the poor? They used to have kida, yani, houses in, in random areas made out of shed, kid, out of nothing. Told her, Let's go live with them so we can feel what they are going through. A man who decided not to be attached to the world. Obviously, by the way, there is no, it's not like, it's not a clear cut. It's not like it's either you're attached or not attached. It's a spectrum. Every one of us attached to a certain extent. But when we are sitting with ourselves tonight, kida, ask yourself, how much am I attached to the world? That's kida, the question that God asks in the first hour. You see, in the third and in the ninth hour, God asks another question. What do you think I am? Who am I to you? He asked the disciples, told him, yani, what do the crowd say about me? And then he told, looked at the disciples, told him, what do you say about me? Who am I to you? What do I mean to you? Is God clearly present in our life? Or he is just the an idea that, that I entertain every once in a while. Is God truly in my life? Do I truly feel Him? Do I truly see Him? Again, it's another question that is a spectrum. You might not يعني, see Him, خالص. you might not see Him at all, and you might see Him very well. It's a spectrum. And then like, the, the church kid gives you a quick answer in the 11th hour, which we are about to read. It tells you, if you have faith like mustard seed, you can move mountains. Yeah, you come to God and you tell God, I'm still attached to the world. He tells you, well, faith is a little bit weak. You come to God and tell him, I really don't know what you mean to me. Sometime I see you clearly, most of the times I don't see you. I barely can see you. God tells you, faith is a little bit weak. Imagine, kidda, truly imagine, imagine if one day you come to church and you truly, truly, 100% believe 
that you're eating the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. It will make you on fire. It will make you on fire. Said that kid, yani the verse that God put to us, it's very kid humbling. He tells you, if you have faith like mustard seed, you can move mountains. We stand before God and tell him, even the mustard seed faith, I don't have. I wish I could have a very tiny bit. Then we can pray and tell him, just give us the mustard seed faith. That's all what we want. One of the fathers said that God does not require mountains of faith to move mountains. But he requires a mustard seed of faith to move mountains. For as we start together the Holy Week, every day, let us search the readings and examine our life in that mirror of love. The love that God gave, in, gave us that exceeded all our expectation, that is without measure, without account, that wasn't just doing bare minimum for our salvation, and start searching your life every day. Today, ask yourself about your worldly attachment. Ask yourself about what God means to you. Search your faith. Tomorrow you will see readings about the fruits. And yeah, we'll keep going in this journey day by day. Let's get a quick summary in Arabic. Today, of course, we are like we are waiting for the end to finish us. We always ask this important question. إيه اللي المخلص محتاج يعمله عشان يخلصنا؟ الإجابة بسيطة خالص، ربنا محتاج يجي يموت من أجلنا، هو ده اللي إحنا محتاجينه، إله متجسد يموت من أجلنا. فإحنا طرحنا السؤال، طب يا رب ليه بس ما جيتش كده وعشت بينا ومت وخلاص؟ يعني كان ممكن ربنا يجي يعيش مش لازم عيلة غنية ولا حاجة، بس ممكن عيلة عادية، يعيش كده شوية وبعد كده حد يقطع راسه وخلاص وخلص الموضوع على كده. لكن ربنا اختار طريق صعب من أول ميلاده لحد صلبه كل حاجة بيعملها ربنا جبارة تلاقي كده ربنا عاش فقير عاش مرزول عاش مرفوض الناس بتعامله باستحقار عاش غير معروف محدش يعرف عنه حاجة لمدة 30 سنة تألم بكى تقول لي يا رب طب ليه بتعمل كده يقول لك أنا عايزك تعرف قد إيه أنا حاسس بيك. مش كفاية بس اللي أنا أقف في السماء وأقول لك أنا حاسس بيك وعارفك ومقدرك، لا ده أنا جاي أقول لك أنا عشت اللي أنت عشته. تيجي تقول لي يا رب أنا وحيد يقول لك أنا عارف. تيجي تقول لي يا رب أنا بتألم يقول لك أنا عارف. تيجي تقول لي يا رب الناس بتتكلم عليا بالظلم يقول لك أنا عارف. تيجي تقول له يا رب ده أنا يا رب فقير وما حلتيش حاجه يقول لك يقول له يا رب ده انا ما حدش يعرفني ده انا بخش الكنيسه وبخرج الناس ما بتحسش بيا يقول لك انا عارف يقول لك تقول له يا رب يعني انا مرزول يقول لك انا عارف تلاقي كده العلاقه كده ليها طعم مختلف الهنا مش اله قاعد في السماء مش حاسس بينا لا ده اله جه وعاش اللي احنا عايشينه وده اللي احنا ضايقينه صدقوني لو كان ربنا جه وعاش عيشة عادية ومات كنا برضه هنمجده لأن ده فيه اتضاع وفيه محبة جبار ولكن المحبة اللي ربنا راها لنا تفوق الخيال كله. النهارده برضه اتكلمنا على نقطتين حلوين كده نتأمل فيهم من خلال قرايات اليوم أول نقطة كده ربنا يقول لك كده لازم كده حبة ال ال الويت لازم تدفن وتموت. ساعات كده تلاقي ربنا يسمح بتجربة الإنسان يدفن فيها شوية. تلاقي واحد كده خادم حلو وكويس وبتاع يروح ربنا كده سمح له اللي هو ينفصل كده عن الناس ويروح شغلانه بعيده مثلا ما لقيش ما لقيش مكان جنبه ليه يا رب اقول لك ده زرعه كده هموتها شويه عشان تطلع بشجره حلوه ايه مدى ايه مدى يعني الارتباط بتاعنا بالعالم كل شهوات العالم سواء من شكل ومناظر وفلوس وسلطه كل حاجه كل واحد فينا كده يسأل نفسه أنا مدى ارتباطي بالعالم؟ طبعا ما فيش حاجة اسمها زي ما قلنا بالإنجليش فيش حاجة اسمها أنا مرتبط أو مش مرتبط هي عبارة عن 
في واحد مرتبط شويه في واحد مش مرتبط خالص في واحد زي القديس اغسطينوس قال لك صرت على قمه العالم حينما لا اريد شيئا ولا اخاف شيئا كل واحد حسب حسب يعني علاقته مع ربنا بس دي نقطه ناخدها كمقياس قدام محبه الرب العجيبه يعني لما ربنا يقف يقدم لنا المحبه دي كلها احنا نقف ونفحص قلوبنا النقطه الثانيه اللي اتكلمنا فيها السؤال اللي ربنا قاله للتلاميذ في الساعه الثالثه والساعه التاسعه انا بالنسبه لك ابقى ايه انا بالنسبه لك ابقى ايه ساعات كده الواحد كده يقول له يا رب يعني انا مش حاسس بيك ده انا باجي كده انت بالنسبه لي كده بعد افكار بعد فكر بيجي لي كده شويه اقول ده ربنا موجود كده ممكن اقرا الانجيل احس مشاعر كويسه وتعد عليا ايام ويمكن سنين ولا اعرف عنك اي حاجه انا بالنسبه لك ايه نقعد كده نفحص قلوبنا واخر حاجه في حساء ال11 لسه نقراها ربنا يتكلم على الايمان يقول لك كده المشاكل بتاعتنا بتاعت من اول الساعه الاولى لحد الساعه التاسعة هي اللي ما فيش ايمان انا متمسك بالارض عشان ايمانك ضعيف انا مش شايفك كويس يا رب عشان ايمانك ضعيف زي ما الايه الحلوه اللي نسمعها في الانجيل دلوقتي يقول لك ان كان لكم ايمان كحبه الخردل تكون لهذا الجبل انتقل فينتقل واحد من الاباء يعني زي ما قلنا بالانجليش قال ربنا ما طلبش مننا جبال من الايمان عشان تحرك جبال لكن طلب كده ايه حبه خردل صغيره عشان تحرك ايمان حرك جبال ربنا يدينا كده الفتره دي اللي احنا نبص في مرايه المحبه بتاعه المسيح ونفحص قلوبنا ونقرب اليه وكل ما بنقرب اليه كل ما بنشوف نوره وكل ما النور بتاعه دوت بينعكس علينا احنا ونفحص قلوبنا اكتر ونبقى شبهه ونبقى ايقونه حلوه ليه واحنا كل المجد الدائم الابدي